Look at this. Behold the 80s. And we're going to race radio control. I don't have any words that aren't like obscenities and insanely offensive. So let's just say that's the stupidest thing I've ever. <laughs> All right, so today, two great things going on. One, I'm getting a new motorcycle. Well, it's an old motorcycle, but it's awesome. It's beautiful, it's fast, it's rare. I had one in the past, had some awesome memories on it, but it was a different time in life and I had to sell it, but had an opportunity now. And one of the things that made it possible was I got hooked up with, frankly, the best transportation company I have ever seen, met, or used. Same people that transported the 31 Buick I got, but I wanna show you guys the bike because I've cleaned up my garage. We're gonna do some fun stuff there this winter. But right now I'm going down to Bowling Green, Ohio to the uh, indoor carpet on-road radio control racing club and do a Genius Garage thing with radio control cars this year in Menderion. And uh, of course Genius Garage is in the position to be able to provide the opportunity so they can do that and the young people can learn and have fun free of charge. So going down there to play with some radio control cars, then we're getting a bike in my garage, yes! Dodge the potholes, Durr. So I was a kid of the 80s born in 81 so i'm like right between x and millennial i don't associate with millennial but i joke and say i'm the prototype which means i'm better <laughs> okay someone's triggered i don't care i'm at the mall now the cool thing about this mall is um i don't really understand how it exists but it does now the beautiful thing about it is time has stood still since like 1987. look at this behold the 80s it legit feels like a time warp. Like I'm straight up walking to my childhood, but no one's here. <laughs> it's just like some, what do you call it? Twilight Zone stuff. Mm. Okay. Look at that. Oh, it's an 80s tree. Is that a real tree? Oh my God, it is. So there's the radio control track. Yes. Elder Beerman. Do those still exist? You guys, check it out. You know this is going to be fun. So come with me to Bowling Green, Ohio where there's a weird space-time continuum thing and it's still 1987 and we're going to race radio control. Let's go sneak up on Andrew. I don't know how he'll Let's see how he reacts to me just throwing the camera in his face. Oh, there you are. Hey. Oh, who's this guy? Who are you? Hey, I'm Drew. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So Drew, where am I and why is this place cool? Well, this is um, the Black Swamp Raceway located in Bowling Green, Ohio, and we race RC cars. I dig it. So is this your paddock right now? It is. What are, we, what are the uh, four basic classes here? Just real quick for people. Uh, 12th scale uh, GT. I dig it. We have 10th scale GT, it's called WGTR. Okay. EOS GT, which is an all-wheel drive uh, touring car. I dig it. And I saw these the other day. So the pan cars are more kind of like their dynamics are specific to radio control. But when you get into these guys, these all-wheel drive, they have full like upper and lower arm suspension and shock dampening and sway bars just like a real car. And then we have vintage Trans Am. I dig it. Uses the same chassis. So hold up. So this is vintage Trans Am and radio control racing. Is it just like vintage Trans Am in real car racing and everybody cheats with giant motors or are you guys actually cool and <laughs> you're, you're we're not to supposed to that was mostly a dig on vintage racing hey you guys like calm down with the cheating on the engines uh we're gonna run with the students this year in genius garage with uh 10th scale world gt what are we gonna do today we're gonna try out the different chassis try them out. here we go Yes, he stopped recording, but I screwed up. We gotta leave that in. All right, you guys, I'm back home, and there's the boo-boo. <laughs> with a 
the Ducati in our foyer. But anyway, truck is here, which is really cool because of great communication. And I just go on my phone, the GPS, and I can see it coming the whole way when they stop and everything. So this is the best I've ever had for actually getting something. But uh, so you guys curious to see what I got? Booboo doesn't care, does she? I don't know, she looks pretty interested. <laughs> She's bright-eyed, bushy-faced, let's go. <laughs> no, you're right. I had to get a motorcycle, but do it ostentatiously. <laughs> this isn't your first one, though, right? Motorcycle? No. I had one of these uh, in the past, a long time ago. I'm a crotch rocket guy, so I, I used to. Well, we had a video mm -hmm. when I was a young adult. Yeah. It was called Two, we Two Wheel Madness. I think I've heard of that. Oh, did you? Ooh. Parked the car. I was doing a wheelie, and the girl that was on the bed, she threw me out of balance. Three days I didn't get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. And I was just going to tough it out. Yeah. And then after three days, I went to the hospital. From the hospital. If you wouldn't have come now, we would have had to amputate the back. Oh, my God, really? Yeah, because of the. Uh, uh, All right, you guys. Well, there it is. That is my MV Augusta F4750. Uh, really amazing bike, and for those of you who are overly detail-oriented and remember the second Gone in 60 Seconds movie with Nicolas Cage, that was the bike that Angelina Jolie's character rode. I believe she was like a Ferrari Lamborghini mechanic. Uh, I'm thinking I'm remembering this correctly. I, I can't remember that much. I think I was more into the bike than Angelina actually at the time, which is good it now lives at my house because it won't get me in as much trouble. But anyway, uh, it was something that was really neat. Back in the early 90s, effectively, Ferrari... Uh, designed the original iteration for the engine on this particular machine, uh, which I heard it shared largely the architecture of the late 80s, early 90s V12 uh, Ferrari Formula One car, as, uh, as the story goes anyway. Uh, but as it was designed and designed and redesigned and all that, apparently they uh, ditched a lot of that design. About the only thing really left was the head design. Uh, one of the exceptional and interesting things about this motorcycle was the radial valves, uh, which is the angle. It kind of, I believe it's got a hemispherical combustion chamber, and the valves all come in at a radial kind of pointing center. So it's really sort of a neat thing in regard to the engineering of it. Um, obviously, one of the aspects is, I think it was Tamborini who designed the body, and to be honest, you guys, I'm pulling this out of my memory archives. I didn't look it up again. Uh, I love the bike, obviously, but I need to brush up on some of my history on it. But anyway, um, this bike shares effectively the same designer as my Ducati 916 that I just got, which is also the 986 and 998 and the 748. Um, but this and the Ducati 916 are kind of uh, uh, OGs, shall we say, of the superbike world. Um, this obviously has a single-sided swing arm as well, but this is a four-cylinder inline, 750 cc's. Uh, and of course the four exhaust pipes in the back is a really, really neat styling cue and something that was just awesome. Um, and the motorcycle for me was amazing because back in the early 2000s, a friend of mine and I, uh, we were driving to Road America to a big vintage race because Jim Hall was bringing the Chaparrales and we wanted to see it. And on the way there, we saw a stop along the highway for, it was called like the Ducati Moto Corsa Cafe or something. I'm like, dude, let's get gas and stop there. And when we did, that was when I first saw the MV Augusta brand being uh, launched again. And I think maybe it was a Series Oro or one of the, the high-end ones. It's like fifty or sixty thousand dollars for these motorcycles. Um, obviously, really beautiful, and I fell in love and stuck with it. So I had one of these about eleven years ago. I loved it; it was interesting, uh, and I'm really happy to have one now again, guys. And the transportation company was really awesome. I, and uh, honestly. Check this out on them. One of the biggest challenges of the collector car and motorcycle world is simply enclosed shipping. I found a company called Diamond 7. They transported my prized 1931 Buick Phaeton and most recently, my MV Augusta motorcycle I always wanted. They take incredible detailed pictures of your vehicle before it leaves so you know exactly and gives the comfort that they care. But more than that, I get real-time GPS tracking of the actual truck that my vehicle is on. Guys, Diamond 7, go down in the description below, find the contacts. You can try somebody else, but trust me, after 20 years, Diamond 7 is the one to do. Okay guys, it's actually pretty late in the evening now and uh, just tried off the bike and went over, kind of gave it a little bit of a quick detail. Uh, got some things out, so I have a spare side panel, which I actually hung up on the wall right there. 
the one on the bike right now actually has got some uh, some little issues and stuff. I'm guessing some cracks. I'm not really sure what on earth they filled this in with. It's like some sort of two-part thing. Not done real well. Uh, but this panel's salvageable if I want. I'll go from there. Some other things I noticed about it is this, this motorcycle. Part of the reason why I got it for less money is it sat outside for a couple of years. It was just kind of an everyday bike. So you can see a fair amount of corrosion kind of here with the intake. Um, like the trumpets and the individual throttle bodies. Um, kind of down here on the uh, the motor casings and such. And you can see in here, which I'm kind of wondering if that might be like magnesium. I don't know if it's aluminum or magnesium, but a fair amount of corrosion. Um, I don't think it's going to be that heinous, but um, it, uh, you know, it can use a little bit of love, but it's not terrible, but I think it's going to clean up real well. There's a couple of panels missing here. Uh, maybe I can get some nice looking carbon ones for it. I know these bikes look really well when you replace this ABS piece. Uh, I'm thinking this thing, this might be the intake or something. Like that. But um, yeah, I do like carbon here and then the ABS uh, front fender is just plastic. Um, looks really good if it's carbon bike I had in the past had that. So basically just the tune-up kind of thing. And then the seat, it's monoposto, so single seat, obviously. Um, and then you can see here, it's really squishy because uh, it's all poofed up. But uh, it'd be nice to take this and recover it. Um, look fine in black, but honestly, this looks really amazing with a real warm kind of suede. Uh, something else I noticed about this bike, um, so I dried it off and gave it a quick detail. So the seat here has got the ability with a key um, to open it up. Let's see, where's the spot? I'm not using the key, I'm cheating. Let's see. I, can't, I know where to stick my finger up in it. And it uh, if you finger your Italian motorcycle properly, you can open it up uh, without using the key. Okay, so this is something that is like maximum jank. Uh, so check this, this garbage out. Uh, if you look down here, you can see the battery. And there's this heavy gauge wire going from the battery terminal positive to here where they connected all these positive terminals. One presumably is the, um, you can see one is for the, uh, the trickle charger, the battery tenor, and the other one obviously is the main lead that goes over. But the psychotic thing about this is it's not insulated here and it's not insulated there at all. I put a piece of paper towel underneath it because there's just this little piece of rubber here on the frame, which is bare aluminum, and it was already starting to go through it. So this is full juice from the battery that was shorting to the frame or starting to about. So just absolutely, I don't have any words that aren't like obscenities and insanely offensive. So let's just say that's the stupidest thing I've ever, God, I want to use obscenities. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in electrical and basically just cruising the freaking burn your bike down. So glad I found it quick and I'll fix that. Uh, but just gonna give it a good look over. Um, should be should be good pretty quick. I am I am excited about it, I'm happy. Uh, the price is relatively right. I'm glad that I uh, you know stuck to my guns uh, with getting it for a good bit lower. I actually bought this thing for $3,000 less than I bought the one I had. God, that's been a while, it's been like, 11 years ago when I had one. So not bad. I forgot how many miles on this thing. Um, I'm not gonna start it up guys right now. I'll do it on the next one. We get to work on a little bit more, but let's see here. Okay, so let's switch it over. So on, let's see what the mileage is. I don't remember. Yes, yeah, I'll go 200 miles an hour, blah, blah, blah. Come on, show us mileage. Okay, 17,000, blah, blah. Okay, so. Uh, that's what it is, a few miles on it. Uh, so I need to make sure, I don't know if you have to, I don't know if the valves have been adjusted on this, I kind of doubt it, so. Or if you have to, to be honest, I don't know. Um, but there's some things like that. And I remember the one that I had back when, uh, one of the things you gotta do is, and I hope this one's been done, um, it, uh, the fan for the radiator needs to kick on at a lower temp. And the water pump on them originally was not efficient enough. And uh, at idle, it doesn't pump enough water. It starts to get hot quickly. Um, so and maybe the thermostat too. I seem to remember. I, I remember vividly doing the water pump on mine, uh, the fan to keep it because it would it could, start getting hot fast. And I'm like, holy crap! Um, it's just kind of the way it was. And after that, it was fine. Uh, the other thing you can do if you don't want to spend a fortune for a sport exhaust, and I do mean a fortune. Because there's the stock exhaust, and it's actually kind of interestingly sculpted if you look at it. So, four 
and a two and a one and a two and then a four, uh, obviously for the art of it. But you get these big like muffler kind of things going on and then it goes to the tips. And these tips here are riveted on. I don't know if you can see that. So what you can do is you can take the exhaust off, clean it up, scotch pride it, make it look nice, whatever. And you can drill out the rivets. And then each one of these tips has got a silencer in it. So it works like a glass pack. Uh, and if you take the glass pack out, it's just kind of an open tip. Uh, it does make it louder. I don't really think it affects the tuning per se. Um, it kind of doesn't matter after that point back there, but that's what I did on mine. It worked just fine. Uh, this also has a super maximum jank, um, like for your license plate. So I'm gonna have to make something less garbage than that for it. Um, but yeah, it should be fine. So clean up, figure out what I got. And uh, so hopefully I can run it hard and not blow it up. But uh, that's the bike, you guys. Uh, and then lastly, I really do want to make mention again. So the guy that you saw that uh, was driving the semi-truck that brought it uh, is Diamond 7 Transport. Now, I've been playing with cars and bikes for a very long time now. And uh, gosh, how long ago was it that I shipped my first car? It's been at least 15 years ago or more. Um, with a transport company. And so I've used like all the big ones. I've used a broker for all the little like mom and cop, pop kind of trucking companies and people that have just come to the, this country from another and starting like a little trucking company operation. And I can tell you this, that's Marcel. He owns the company and he actually delivered my bike. He was driving the truck, owns the company that brought it here. Uh, has a number of other trucks, and he does primarily exotic cars, high-end cars, and motorcycles, which is unusual. Typically, it's like one or the other. Um, and it, bar none, the best transportation I've ever had. Uh, one, the best care. Uh, they took a ton of pictures of the vehicle when they pick it up, like compile it in a really nice automated thing, an email that I get to see how it was when they picked it up. They load it up. If the car is perfectly clean, they may cover it. If it's not perfectly clean, they won't cover it, so it won't scuff anything up. And, um, and then I get a link to GPS tracking of the truck and I can see in real time exactly where in the country it is. And which is really awesome because the problem with shipping normally is they tell you, you give them a window when they're gonna pick it up and then they'll just come whatever time. And then the brokers or dispatch are never like straight with the truckers and it always ends up screwing the people that it picks it up for, drops it off with the truckers. But in this circumstance, it was just like flawlessly laid out. The guy was realistic about expectations about when it is to come. And uh, you can always check on your phone of where it's at. So if he tells you, hey, I'm in New York, I'm gonna start pointing your way, uh, it'll be next stop. You can just look and be like, well, there he is. You know, he's on his way or he's getting fuel or hey, they're sleeping at this truck stop or whatever. Um, and it's really good because I don't have all the time in the world. I'm not retired and I don't have, I don't have nothing to do. So. When I know he's, I can look at the thing and be like, he's two hours out and he's on his way. And I might call and be like, hey, you guys stop. So you're going to be straight here. Do I have time to run an errand? And I can coordinate it literally down to the minute, like down to the 10 seconds <laughs> when he's about to pull up in the uh, street in front of my house, which is really awesome. So uh, long story short, Diamond 7 Transport. Um, go in the description below. I got all the links and contact information but bar none, the best transportation I have ever had of a car or motorcycle. And not only did Marcel own the company bring my MV Gusta, that's the same company that brought the Buick from Phoenix. Um, so I'm just super happy. Uh, I think they're gonna be moving some stuff maybe for Genius Garage in the future if we take a race car far away. Uh, and certainly some really cool things to come, which I'll show you guys on the channel at another time. But uh, Diamond 7, looking them up. Bar none, the best transportation I've ever had for a specialty car or motorcycle. But guys, that's it with the MV Augusta. Something I just wanted to get. Uh, I know I've acquired a few things lately. I've sort of been able to, and honestly, from getting back on my feet in the last few years after uh, struggling for a long time, it's nice to kind of horse trade around and sort of find the things, the pieces that mean something to you. Um, so obviously super rare, super fast, super beautiful Italian motorcycle, but I bought it for six grand, which honestly, it's not a lot of money for a cool bike. So I guess if you guys just know what you want and you're where you're going and you're smart with money and you have the patience to make something happen and, you know, you know a little bit of balls to take the risk when something cool comes along, um, hopefully you, you will have, someday you will have a really cool smattering of the vehicles you've always wanted. 
uh, regardless of if they're worth a fortune or not. It doesn't really matter. It's all about what, what you like in the end. We're all car guys and gear heads and stuff, right? So anyway, that's it. Go down below, check out Diamond 7, best transportation company I've ever had bar none. Doesn't matter if you got a Rolls Royce, an MV Augusta, or this old Buick, best one. And uh, look forward to see you guys next time. A lot of cool changes coming up on the channel. Kind of going to rebrand, kind of streamline. I might even open a new channel. But I think everybody is going to like what I have in store for the channel even more than before. See you guys next time.